or very difficult to adapt uh, into our structures. And um, yet, traditionally in history, there has been a very close relationship between Russia and France yes. against Germany. So Russia has been in an, uh, an alliance yes. uh, with France for uh, a very yes. long part of the 19th century. Absolutely. But uh, expansion, expansion normally should lead to dilution. And you have the associate provost, who is obviously a disciple of uh, Vice President Cheney, because he says that there's something called old Europe and something called new Europe. Is there, uh, are, you, are you creating divisions inside the European Union because you are expanding so fast and so highly that you are uh, allowing outsiders to see two Europes already in the European Union? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I think that um, that, that was one of the most unfortunate uh, sentences pronounced by a member of uh, the U.S. administration. Th there is no such a thing as new Europe or um, old Europe. That's, uh, that's clear. Now, it is true that any, at any given time, there are different sensitivities in, in, in the EU, inside the EU. Among other things, because member states continue to be there, member states have their own dynamic, their own political life, their own elections, their own governments. And if you look at this very moment, you take a picture of Europe at a given moment, you have uh, socialist governments in one country, uh, conservative um, governments in another country, etc. Uh, liberals in, in a third country. What, what that means is that at any given time, there is a wide variety of sensitivities, political sensitivities, and consequently approaches to issues. And that's why it is so important for us, our mechanisms for decision making, because we have to have mechanisms that allow all these people from different backgrounds, different sensitivities, and different political ideas to come together and agree on a single course of action. Obviously, we are not always successful, but most of the time we are successful. And that's the, the, great, uh, the greatness, I would say, of Europe, is that we are able to make very different people agree on a course of action of a, a specific decision and the implementation of that decision. But you spoke uh, about Charlemagne and the Holy Roman Empire. And I want to ask you once again, what is the ultimate ambition of the European Union? Are you trying to emulate the United States of America, which was also a bunch of totally different states, and they came together. And in fact, the union in the United States was so tenuous that they had to go through a civil war in order to ultimately achieve the purity of the whole union. But you have something of the similar nature. You have a, a Schengen Agreement under which you can drive from one country to the other, and you don't even notice which country you are in, exactly like driving from New Jersey to Pennsylvania. You don't even know where you are if there was no board telling you you are now entering Pennsylvania. And so part of Europe is Schengen. In other words, you can drive freely. But not all of Europe is Schengen. And so my question is, is what is the role of the British in the European Union? Because the British are like the South in the United States. They, they have a separate view of life. They, they believe that the English Channel is wider than the Atlantic Ocean. And so are the British a, an infiltrator in the European Union, or are they a full partner in the European Union? What's your ambition? <laughs> uh, well, let, let me take it uh, in, in sequentially. Uh, the, the, what, what is the final uh, end, uh, the end game of the, of the European Union? Uh, I don't, uh, nobody knows. And of course, there are people that have different ideas about that. It's a matter of, um, of um, difference of opinion and th thinking. There are federalists that think that the European Union should end up one day being a federal state similar to the United States. There are other people in, in Europe that think um, 
well, you can take, for instance, the eurosceptics uh, from the, the UK that think the European Union should be limited to the very minimum necessary to cooperate on those matters in which clearly all of us have an advantage in doing things together instead of, instead of doing it separately. But it should remain only at that stage. Um, those, of course, there is a wide range there of opinions. The reality is that the, for the time being, what the European Union is, is a process. We keep on integrating more and more. To what point we will not know, and I think probably it's better that it is not known or that nobody intends to determine that right now. But as we integrate, not, obviously not everybody, but not also every country is willing or ready to integrate at the same pace. And that's why in our treaties we have a concept which is called enhanced cooperation. Enhanced cooperation means that those member states that want to go further integrating in one area do it without breaking with the others. And of course, the others have all, always the right to immediately join to that uh, advance whenever they want. And there are, for two, there are many uh, cases of enhanced cooperation, but two which are, of course, the two major cases. One is Schengen that you have mentioned. Is the, the, the complete border, border union, not only in term, economic terms of customs, etc., but in everything, uh, really acting as with a common frontier uh, towards the rest of the world. And the euro is, uh, euro is a, again, an enhanced cooperation. There are a number of member states uh, of the EU that have adopted the euro as their currency. There are others that have not. Uh, of course, the UK uh, among them. Uh, but that is, so to say, something which is foreseen in, in our treaties, in, which is part of the way in which we want to evolve. We want to evolve in a way in which we do not necessarily need to be all of us always at the minimum common denominator, and that there are possibilities to um, go further when a group of countries want to go further. Now, the question about the UK itself. I think the UK will probably have to, in the next 10 years or so, be confronted with some of these basic decisions concerning, for instance, the euro or concerning Schengen. Uh, or, or a civil war. <laughs> I hope that that's not the way in which we solve our problems. <laughs> because the whole story, as I said, we said before, is about avoiding wars and not the contrary. But certainly, certainly uh, this is, of course, a very personal opinion, but I think that the, the, in the next uh, 10 years or so, the UK will have to take some fundamental decisions respect, in respect of some of these issues. I, I, I'm not, I don't want to put it in a more complicated way of taking decisions about the, well, the philosophy of Europe or, or things like that. No, but about um, are they going to be with the British pound in 15 years from now? I don't know. Or are they going to be outside Schengen in 15 years? I probably would say already no. Those are aspects that, um, of course, um, it's up to the UK to, to, to decide. But the question is that our system allows uh, to those that want now to already go there, go there. And those that want perhaps to do it later, to be able to come later. Let's turn for a minute to geopolitics. Uh, the European Union has a privileged relationship with the United States. And that privileged relationship really exists because Europe has no defense. There is no such thing as European defense. And so you are totally dependent on NATO, which is really the United States, for uh, the umbrella of defense. Now that creates an, a contradiction between Europe and Russia, which is a part of Europe, because NATO is going to push at the borders of Russia. And you see some of the results of that. Georgia is a case in point. And so how do you see the geopolitical development of a Europe which is dependent on the United States for its defense with uh, Russia, which is its immediate neighbor, with whom there will inevitably have to be a tendency to encircle. Yes, I think uh, you are touching on a very, very uh, crucial issue. 
because uh, to, to, a, to, a, to a certain extent, the future of, of, uh, of Europe uh, 